In the annals of true crime, few stories are as mysterious and captivating as the disappearance of Michael Rockefeller. Heir to one of the wealthiest families in the world, Michael's quest for art and adventure led him to the remote regions of Papua New Guinea in 1961. However, his journey took a dark turn, and he vanished without a trace. This video delves into the Michael Rockefeller true crime case, exploring the circumstances surrounding his disappearance, the investigations that followed, and the enduring mystery that has puzzled investigators and the public for decades. Michael Rockefeller was born into one of the most influential families in American history. As the son of New York governor and future U.S. Vice President Nelson Rockefeller, Michael enjoyed a life of privilege and wealth. Despite his prestigious background, he sought something beyond the confines of his family's fortune, an insatiable appetite for adventure and a passion for art. In 1961, at the age of 23, Michael Rockefeller embarked on an expedition to the remote Azmat region of Papua New Guinea. His mission was twofold, to collect indigenous art for his father's newly founded Museum of Primitive Art and to satisfy his own artistic curiosity. The Azmat people, known for their intricate wood carvings, became the subjects of Michael's exploration. On November 17, 1961, tragedy struck. Michael and Dutch anthropologist René Wassing capsized their canoe while attempting to reach a neighboring village. Determined to seek help, Michael set out swimming for the distant shore. Wassing was eventually rescued, but Michael vanished into the dense mangrove swamps, leaving behind a shroud of uncertainty. The news of Michael Rockefeller's disappearance prompted an extensive search, involving local authorities, the Dutch government, and even the Rockefeller family's personal resources. Despite aerial surveys, ground searches, and exhaustive efforts, no trace of Michael was found. The mystery deepened as conflicting reports emerged, fueling speculation about his fate. Numerous theories emerged regarding Michael Rockefeller's disappearance. Some suggested he fell victim to the treacherous waters or succumbed to the inhospitable environment. Others entertained the idea of foul play, proposing that he might have been attacked by locals or even kidnapped. The lack of concrete evidence fueled a range of hypotheses, and the case remained unsolved. The Azmat people, living in isolation and unfamiliar with Western customs, became central figures in the speculation surrounding Michael's disappearance. Anthropologists and investigators grappled with the complexities of cultural misunderstandings and the potential clash between indigenous traditions and the modern world. The incident raised questions about the ethics of ethnographic exploration and the impact of outside influence on isolated communities. Michael Rockefeller's disappearance left an indelible mark on the Rockefeller family and the world of anthropology. His legacy became entwined with ongoing discussions about the responsibilities of researchers in remote areas and the potential consequences of cultural interactions. The unsolved nature of the case fueled both intrigue and frustration, leaving many to wonder about the fate of the adventurous Rockefeller scion. The true crime case of Michael Rockefeller's disappearance remains an enduring mystery, marked by the intersection of privilege, adventure, and cultural exploration. Decades later, the questions surrounding his fate persist, making his story a haunting and enigmatic chapter in the history of true crime. As the world continues to grapple with the complexities of cross-cultural encounters and the consequences of exploration, the search for answers in the Michael Rockefeller case serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us that even in the most remote corners of the globe, mysteries may linger, forever eluding resolution.